G3 here. This video is part of my design series, which will give you tips and tricks that you can use for your own LEGO puzzle box builds. Today, I have several fun examples I put together to demonstrate an advanced puzzle boxing concept called hysteresis. Now this concept is taught to mathematicians, physicists, and engineers, although sometimes by different names. I sometimes just call them push-pulls. The main idea of hysteresis is that when you undo the thing you just did, the system does not actually return to its original state, so it's kind of a trick. So when I call it a push-pull, that's only interesting when the pull doesn't fully return the puzzle box to the position it was in before it was pushed. Let's get started with our examples. First, I'll use basic approaches to achieve a puzzle box design objective. Then, I'll show you how hysteresis can improve that design. For the first example, let's think about using a long tile as a tool to poke out a Lego money prize. So we'll have a money tile as a slider that sits flush on its side, and there will be a smooth open path through to the other side of the box where the tool will go in. After we've built up some structure, you can start to see the idea. So let's make this a little more interesting by making a bigger sliding button that's blocking the path of the tool. I'll use a couple of these 1x4 plates with two studs on the ends as the base, so there will be room for the tool to pass through. We'll build it up, changing each layer a bit so it'll be really strong. We'll give it a little arm for a resistor tile that will keep the button in place without jiggling freely. Now we place the button in. You can see now that the button has to be moved up in order to align with the path. That way the tool can slide through. It works, it's fine, but we can use hysteresis to improve it. Let's build another button. This time we'll keep the button's path in line with the tool path. But let's now block the path inside the rest of the box with an additional slider piece. There will be a new little arm sticking out, so the new slider can get pushed out of the way. Then when the button is returned to its initial position, the path for the tool should be clear. Now we get a two for one with multiple moves out of the same mechanism. That's pretty handy. Most hysteresis implementations I've used involve resistance that allows parts to be coupled or not, depending on whether the parts can move freely. Let's look at another example that shows dynamic coupling more clearly. For the second example, let's consider hiding an axle tool flush with the outer wall. The tool is meant to be discovered and removed. First, I'll just build up something obvious that comes to mind, where a simple slider button on one side of the box pushes an axle through, uh, through an axle brick. There's nothing terrible about this approach. It works. But what if your puzzle box is really long you're gonna end up using a lot of real estate inside the puzzle just to get that motion translated from one side all the way to the other. That's space that you could use to add or improve other mechanisms. Here's how hysteresis can help. We're gonna reverse things around and make the axle now go through the button. Now as the button gets pulled out, it draws the axle through the axle brick with it. But when you push the button back in, the resistance of the axle hole keeps the axle in place and it starts to want to pop out. The funny thing about this one is that sometimes people press the button right on the axle head and it goes right back in. So there's no hysteresis. It actually does return to its initial position. So the solver needs to use their senses to realize that the outcome depends on where they press the button. Like where on the button are they pushing it? Hysteresis is a really important concept and I use it all the time in puzzle boxes I build. If there seems to be enough interest in the comments, I could easily find other unique examples to show you. Can you think of a way to use hysteresis to improve a mechanic that you've used in your own puzzle box builds? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to hit that like button. 